Alrighty, so welcome back to the channel. I just remembered that it's about to get cold and there's just some things you really want to try to catch early on because if you don't catch it early on, you're going to have problems later. So I have a 2019 Keystone Cougar. We live in it full time and our furnace has only been serviced maybe one time because it's out of warranty and because I don't really want to pay anyone right now, I'm going to just do some just simple maintenance. And I think one of the biggest things you have to look at here is the seal switch. I think that this is something that's really important. And you can kind of see right there, there's some lint on this. Now, if you don't know what this is, the seal switch is probably the weakest link to any furnace. From what my RV tech told me is nine times out of 10, whenever there's an issue with the furnace, it always starts with the sail switch. So I've had my sail switch replaced twice and that was before we moved in it full time. But since we've been living in it, it's been smooth sailing. I always recommend if you do plan on doing some winter camping or if you just live in a climate that gets cold, it's probably a good idea to keep one of these on deck because depending on what brand you have I have a Dometic furnace which I don't really like I hope my next RV has a Suburban because I've just had a lot of problems with this the control board I guess for some reason water sat in here and just destroyed this so they did some upgrades to it and now it hasn't had that problem since then so I would just recommend having a sail switch on board. And of course, just checking this area. Now, as you see, I did turn it off from here, so I would have to remember to turn this back on. And I think one thing I want to do is I might want to blow this out too. Uh, my RV tech said that that's really all you have to do is just blow this area out and you know, make sure this area is not contaminated with like a lot of uh, webs, things like that. And just make sure that all the wires, you know, are seated correctly on here. And that's really it. So again, going into the winter season, I think it's a better idea. While in the fall, it's not so hot outside, it's not so cold outside to just start looking at some of the maintenance that you can do on your furnace. This is just a basic check. My RV is only four years old, even though we live in it full time, there's not a lot that needs to be done to it. So let me go ahead and take the sail switch out so you guys can see what it is. Alrighty, so now that I have the sail switch out, I want you guys to listen so you can hear this. Hopefully you guys can hear that. So if you don't know what a sail switch is, I half the time don't know what it is either. But in layman's terms, this basically measures the airflow for the furnace to ignite. I guess that's, it's, it's like a protector for the furnace, obviously, because you have heat from a live flame pro producing heat for this thing but you have that fan in order to allow that heat to flow or it might build up enough heat to maybe start a fire. I don't know, that's what I can only assume. I'm not a RV tech, but I just know that if this is not working, then you will not have a uh, flame for the furnace to ignite to warm your coach. So you wanna make sure again that this is taken care of properly. It's not hard to do, all I did, there were four screws on my Dometic uh, cover for the back of the furnace. You took those off and as you can see here this slides out of the exhaust and then basically it just comes right off and that's it. That's all you have to do. And my RV tech just told me all you have to do is blow some compressed air inside of here and that should be enough maintenance for this you know until you have to obviously take it out to do major repairs but the good news is everything is pretty much on the outside so this makes maintenance a lot easier so I do like what Dometic has done I guess I can't knock them too much because everything is where you would want it to be at I will show you the back of it here in a second but I'm gonna wait around to see what my friend wants me to do else I am gonna put some compressed air inside of there and then that's pretty much it Part of the reason why I don't have a lot of maintenance to do is because I did put a cover over my exhaust. I have a picture here of a mud dopper. These love the smell of propane and they do make nests in your appliances that use propane. So your 
refrigerator, your furnace, your water heater. So be sure to put covers over these things that way they can't get inside of them because if they make a nest in there, which you can see here, it will be a lot more work for you to have to clean out that nest and it's really hard to do. Alrighty, so I pull all the dust off of this thing. Be very, very careful. Now that clicking sound, if you could hear it, I have my mic turned the other way, but if you can hear that click, there's like a little button. Oh, it's like right down there. And so when the fan turns on, it basically it initiates the sail switch. So it basically pushes it. And then that's what's gonna allow the furnace to light. So just make sure all this is nicely cleaned out. This is a very sensitive part. So you wanna be very careful. You don't wanna break this or bend this because you could affect its performance. I do notice too, there's some dust on the outside of this um, cover here. And I'm, I'm wondering if it's because this isn't sealed correctly. But as you guys can see, there's a little bit of dust build up inside of here. Um, I don't think you really need to clean this area. You probably would have to take the whole thing apart to clean the inside of this uh, motor here. But we're not gonna do all that because I don't find that there's any performance loss. So we're good there. But nevertheless, last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow some compressed air in here and then I'm pretty much done. So I do have a Vier, but I prefer having an actual uh, tank personally. And I bought this off of Amazon. I'll put it in the description so you can buy it. I will get a small commission if you do purchase it. So all you have to do is just go in here with it, blow out any dust that you see. I put a little bit of air still in here. I have it actually at 80 PSI's. So I feel like that's good enough. It's a good amount of air and I don't think it'll damage anything. So like I said, So hopefully you guys can see the furnace. Just that little silver box there. That's pretty much um, what it looks like in the back. I hope you guys can see it there. I can't see the camera, but yeah, you don't really need to take it out. I was gonna take everything out and and really service it, but I don't really see the need to. It looks like everything is pretty good back here. And as I mentioned, most of the components are on the front. So for the exhaust, I'm running a little bit higher on the PSI's. So like, honestly, I've already done it. I just want to show you guys. So all you gotta do is just blow air inside of this exhaust. And I'm gonna turn it on and see if anything comes out. And I think we're pretty much done. So I put the sail switch back in, it's all cleaned off. There are only two screws holding it on each side. Be very careful and strip these out. And I just used a small screwdriver like this because those screws were kind of unique so I just use this set here for that I have a ton of tools for an RV I think I'm probably gonna do the same thing with my uh, refrigerator too I'm just gonna blow out the area but that's not gonna be in the video I'm just gonna do that real quickly but I hope this was helpful be sure to tackle this I would also recommend going in the owner's manual to see if there's anything else you should be doing to your furnace but for now i don't see that this needs a lot of attention i just wanted to clean off the sail switch clean out the exhaust and we should be good to go for another year or so see you guys in the next video since you stayed to the end i figure i'll show you guys really quickly what would happen if i ignite this to see what happens so the fan is on right now let's see if the sail switch will initiate the uh, furnace I do need to change my uh, propane regulator because I'm having some issues with that. But this is this is working pretty good actually. Perfect. 